time it is. Marvin Devine, Hoover, Axel, and you know how we do. <laughs> yeah, I got the juice, yeah, I got the juice Whip game cool, make them look like cool Always play cool, that's the biggest rule But they what they doing, keep on doing everyone doing this evening give me a thumbs up if you can hear me thank you for joining me i know it's late but this is a topic discussion that needs to be talked about um no one is talking about it but yet warriors are suffering right under our noses excuse me share this broadcast share this broadcast because we have warriors on the Gulf Coast. Remember, kidney disease is all over the world, especially here in the United States. Those southern Gulf Coast have a lot of dialysis facilities. Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida. I mean, the list goes on and on. So what prompted me to do this broadcast tonight a young lady reached out to me on TikTok. She DM'd me and told me her father was on dialysis three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And she said, she asked me, how long can he live without dialysis? That was very disheartening to hear that. The, the nephrologist, she said, called her and told her dad that he needs to evacuate. So a little um, statistics before I get into my topic. August 28th, Hurricane Ida intensified over warm Gulf 
of Mexico waters on Saturday, prompting tens of thousands to flee coastal areas while President Joe Biden pledged aid to help states quickly recover once the storm has passed. Forecasters said Ida could make a U.S. landfall on Sunday night as an extremely dangerous Category 4 storm on the five-step Safford Simpson scale generating winds of 140 miles per hour, which is 225 kilometers or KPH, heavy downpours, and the tidal surge that can plunge much of the Louisiana shoreline under several feet of water. Now, what does that mean to kidney warriors, people with chronic illnesses that depend on oxygen, respirators, kidney dialysis machines, peritoneal dialysis machines? What does that mean to those individuals that have to depend on that power or cannot go anywhere else because they have this equipment with them. So what needs to happen tonight is going to go over briefly some items and steps that you can take if you're in that path or you find yourself not able to leave and you have to hunker down, okay? So right now, share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. This is so important that everybody missed it. And it's not no one's fault. It was not no one's fault that they didn't have a show about this. But now is the time to mobilize, centralize, and get the information out so warriors on that Gulf Coast can be prepared. So steps to prepare for an emergency, any type of emergency right now, Hurricane Ida, is a possible category four hurricane, which they are requesting people to evacuate. So one, you want to make sure you gather and carry important medical information. If you don't have your medical information, I don't know what to tell you. Weekend tomorrow is Sunday. If the storm hits, like they said, dialysis clinics will not be open on Monday. They may. Check your local news. You, all, you got staff that also may have to evacuate. You know what I'm saying? People work in dialysis. Some may stay. Some may evacuate. So you may find these clinics short of staff. Where does that put you? Okay, if you got to evacuate and if you don't have any records, make sure you have some information, medical documents from the hospital from the past that you can take with you. Okay, two, it may be too late to ask your facility about how to find out about alternative arrangements for treatment. Three, Prepare an emergency stock of supplies, food, and medicine. Number four, know that know what diet to follow if your dialysis must be delayed. Now, if you're in that category where your dialysis delayed and it's the weekend, you know you must curb your fluid intake, curb your sodium intake, curb your phosphorus, your potassium. Those are four very important uh, dietary restrictions that you need to follow to ride out this storm. Okay, again, take your medical 
information, your history. If you got your med list, take that with you. If you know how many hours you run on dialysis, your filter size, your needles, what bath you run. That is very important. And if you don't know that now, when you come back, make sure you gather this information for the next time you may fall into this situation. Make sure you got personal information, your name, your address, your city, your home phone number, emergency contact, the relationship to you, their address. Okay, make sure you got your insurance information, other insurance, your Medicare, your private insurance. Okay, make sure you know your medical information. What's your primary diagnosis? Okay, what caused your uh, kidney disease? You got any other medical conditions? You have any allergies or any complications? You have any other previous operations or illness? What is your usual uh, dialysis mode of treatment? Do you do incin or do you do home hemo? Do you do chronic ambulatory peritoneal dialysis? Do you do chronic cycling peritoneal dialysis? Do you do intermittent peritoneal dialysis, okay? That's the stuff that you need to know. So if you go to another facility or to a hospital in another state and you don't have your information, you can get treated. Uh, you need to know the name of your dialysis facility, the address, the phone number, and any other uh, emergency phone numbers. And if you're at, on home dialysis, do you know your local utility uh, uh, phone number? Do you have a backup generator if your power goes out? Okay, do you know your current medication? Do you have a list? Do you know the dosage? Do you know the frequency of how uh, uh, how often you take your medicine? Okay, are you on any phosphorus binders? Uh, did your doctor prescribe you a prescription called uh, Sorbitol SPS, which helps bind the potassium uh, into the gut so it can be eliminated through the stools. So definitely have a med list and know your medication, your dosage, and the frequency, okay? Also, do you have a medical emblem to state that you have a chronic illness? Make sure you have that with you, okay? And if you don't have that now, make sure you get it when you come back uh, to your regular facility or wherever you go for any type of medical treatment. Okay. Uh, if you can't make alternative arrangements, try to make alternative arrangements with family members in other states to see if they can hook you up to get treatment somewhere there. Okay. And make sure you got that gas along to let them know your facility information. Okay. So uh, so right now, we're trying to help warriors make it through Hurricane Ida, okay? So let's see if you got a list of supplies, stock of supplies that you can get to before you evacuate or if you got to hunker down. If you can get to the store, get somewhere where you can get these supplies, please do it. Share this video. Share this video. In fact, Kidney disease is so important that I'm going to take a quick break to show you how important this disease is. Hello, I'm Darren. We have breaking news. More than 600,000 Americans have kidney failure. While the number of people with kidney failure is enormous, the number of people with its precursor chronic kidney disease is staggering. An estimated 31 million Americans, or about 10% of the US population. Diabetes and hypertension cause two thirds of all cases of kidney disease. One out of every three Americans is at risk for kidney disease, and kidney disease is now among the top 10 causes of death in the United States. In addition, nine out of 10 people with early to moderate kidney disease don't know they have it, putting their health in jeopardy. Are you at risk? For more information, contact urbankidneyalliance.org. The life you save may be yours. What's going on, guys? 
All right, share this broadcast. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of warriors suffering tonight that are in the wake of Hurricane Ida, okay? There are thousands of kidney warriors and other warriors who suffer from chronic illnesses had to evacuate or hunker down that need to hear this information. Share this broadcast. I don't care what you have to do. Smash that share button, guys. So let's go into step three about preparing an emergency stock of supplies or having these supplies on hand. Okay, here's a list. If you don't have it, try to get it. Or if you do got it, God bless you. Here we go. Some measuring cups, teaspoons, and tablespoons, droppers, plastic knives, spoons, forks, a uh, pack of napkins and paper plates, pack of plastic or styrofoam bowls, paper towels, pack of plastic cups, candles, matches, can opener, manual, baby wipes, sharp knife, flashlight and batteries, scissors, garbage bags, plastic jug for storing water, one small bottle of household chlorine bleach, piece of cloth, cheesecloth, or handkerchief, strainer, extra pair of eyeglasses in case the first pair breaks, radio and batteries, okay, first aid kit, five to seven day supply of all your medicine, five-day supply of antibiotics if you use peritoneal dialysis and recommended by your doctor, diuretics, fluid pills, sorbitol, and KX late for potassium control if recommended by your doctor. Also, keep this in mind if you're diabetic, five to seven day supply of syringes, five to seven day supply of insulin, Keep cool, but do not freeze. Best kept refrigerated, but will keep at room temp. But will keep at room temperature for up to one month. Okay, five to seven day supply of glucose monitoring supplies like lancets and alcohol wipes. If you use a, gluc a glucose meter, have spare batteries and test strips. If you have heart disease, five to seven days uh, supply of all blood pressure, heart, and anti-clotting medications. Note, if you use a mail service pharmacy, have them send medicines a week before you run out. Allow extra time for processing and mailing back to you. Oh, keep a supply of medicine at your workplace, guys, or any place you spend a great deal of time, like a family member's house. This stuff is very important. Please, if you don't have this stuff, get it. All right? So we don't have warriors inboxing me asking about their family members. Even if you're a caregiver, you can be watching this and get this for your family members or whoever you care for with a chronic illness or with chronic renal disease that depends on dialysis treatment. Okay, so here's an uh, emergency food list. Okay, I'm not gonna get into the diet plan, but I'm just gonna go over a quick list that can help you, okay? A quick list. This list provides a six-day supply of canned foods and water. However, you want to use fresh foods as long as they are available. So that's the first option is fresh food and to use it as long as possible and then go to the canned food. Because we know canned food is processed, it's high in sodium, 
I am fat. Do you follow me? So here we go. Three package of dry milk or four to eight ounces cans of evaporated milk. One or two gallons of distilled or bottled water. Two packages of powdered fruit flavored drink mix or one container of fruit flavored drink pre-mixed. One to two cans or bottles of soft drink. Okay, six pack of four ounce cans or boxes of fruit juice, cranberry, apple, or grape. Six boxes of single serving cereal, no raisin brands. Okay, small box white sugar or box of sugar packets. 12, uh, 12 four ounce cans or fruit bowls of fruit. Pears, peaches, oranges, mixed fruit, applesauce, or pineapple. No raisin. Does that make sense? Six, eight ounce cans of low sodium vegetables. Carrots, greens, green beans, peas, corn, or wax beans. Six, three ounce or four ounce cans of low sodium meat, tuna, crab, chicken, salmon, or turkey, one jar peanut butter, one small jar jelly or honey, three small jars of mayonnaise, or eight to 12 single serve foil wrap pack. One loaf of regular bread, not salt free, with no preservatives. One box of vanilla wafers or graham crackers. Five package of candy, sour balls, hard candy, jelly beans or mints. One package of marshmallows. One jumbo pack of chewing gum. Also note, bread can be kept frozen for three months. All right, guys, let me tell you, again, peace and blessings to everyone affected in the Gulf Coast, especially kidney warriors that go through dialysis and other uh, chronic uh, illness warriors that have to depend on any type of device, medical device that depends on electricity. So again, what you should do if you have any advice, stay at home unless you are hurt, begin your three day emergency diet, wait for instructions and details about dialysis on TV, radio, phone, or messenger, if you must evacuate the area or go to a shelter, tell the person in charge about your special needs and take your emergency survival box. So this is your boy, Steve, the kidney nurse. I hope uh, you got something out of this. Uh, please stay safe, watch out. Uh, stay informed and do what you need to do to keep yourself and your family safe. Until next time, we see you then. Stay safe. God bless. And we see you soon. Peace and blessings.
Tell her go ride or die.